One, one UN estimate um, put it that each year about 13 million tons of plastic is, is dumped into the oceans. And it is estimated that by the year 2050, we'll have more plastic than fish in our oceans. And so <clears throat> that kind of statistic is not sustainable at all for our environment. And so we have to do something. And that is why on World Environment Day, it is a people's day where we have to do something about protecting and conserving our local environment. CFBC are observing World Environment Day that's coming on uh, this year, that's coming on the 5th of June under the UN theme of beating plastic pollution. On pollution of the environment we cover broadly three areas or three types of pollution. One is um, land-based, air-based and water-based pollution. In all of those areas plastic pollution is a problem where plastic pollution can overwhelm our, land, uh, our landfill and other areas where they accumulate as point sources. We also have um, where much of the plastic, once we have heavy rainfall, will make their way into the sea. And when the plastic is burnt, we get air pollution coming from plastic. Give us an environmental studies assessment of what you see here. Um. Okay, over here you see some plastic waste that has washed up from the ocean. Um, this can be hazardous as if it's located on the beach, it shows that there's a lot more in the ocean because, as I said, it is washed up. Mango swamp is home to like, many types of animals and they come back to their habitat and they see all these plastic, all these foreign objects that they've never seen before. They might eat it, that could potentially choke them, killing them off, and that lowers like the species diversity, you know, the amount of animals that actually live in the mango area. We're on Keys Beach, and if you just step onto Keys Beach, so you walk, you hit grass, as soon as you hit the sand line, you're going to see tons of bits of plastic. And so it ends up into the waterways, and we know of course that the sea brings it back on land, and then you have to think about the organisms eating it. And then it's stored in their fatty tissues and it bioaccumulates. And then over a period of time, then you could have biomagnification as it moves up the food chain. It could be eating other organisms that these um, chemicals have been stored in their fatty tissues and then we could get sick. So you have different illnesses that could come about from it, especially different cancers. Plastic is highly toxic for the human body. And so then we have to deal with that as an issue. We're here at Greenleaf Hydroponics Farm and we're talking about plastic and plastic pollution in the environment and how dangerous it is to our ecosystem and our plants and nutrient cycling. It's things like centipedes and your insects in general, they are the ones that actually break down the once living matter, return it to the ecosystem in a, in a nutrient cycling format which we call the detritus cycle. So they're very, very important. Plastics impact them directly. And when we have situations where we have organic matter trapped or we have voids in soils created from large amount of plastic deposits, then we have that disconnect between the detritivores and the organic matter. So they slow the rate of return. If the plants can't go effectively, animals can't eat effectively, and if they can't eat effectively, it affects us as well as the animals. On this table, we are showcasing biodegradable, reusable alternatives to conventional plastics. Alternatives to plastic 
use include cloth bags and I'm sure that we can recall those bags that we used when I was growing up. We took those bags to the shops to purchase our bread and our groceries. We have um, bags made from jute or burlap and you can also use um, bamboo containers. We can switch to glass bottles, ceramic containers. We can reuse single instead of having our plastic bottles and just throwing them away after each single use we can also have um, multiple use of our plastic bottles we can also educate the, the general populace about the use of um, cosmetics these cosmetics many of them contain microbeads uh, particularly facial scrubs um, lotions Toothpaste. So we have to start thinking about things like sorting garbage. So you have your compost, which would be your chicken bones and your rice and the leftover bread and all that, separate apart from your aluminum cans, from your glass, from your, your pieces of metal, from your cardboards, everything. So it makes it a lot more efficient in terms of getting those materials out and repackaged into something else and coming back into the community. We might have to partner with a, with a facility that is equipped to handle sorting and we already have a, a facility here in Ireland which is Admirals that does a, a pretty good job. We have partnered with Ross now almost, almost four years now. They have uh, 30 bins of which one for plastic, one for aluminum, and one for glass. And right now, we are visiting there three times weekly for all of the locations. And then in the more busier spots, we're now there daily. We have also a few private schools and a few public schools that some of the professors have taken upon themselves to use their classrooms and create projects with some of their students as well. And they, they will come together and they will collect bottles and they will bring them already counted and they will bring them here to have a, a cash redemption. And just in conversation with a few different students, we've heard that they're using these projects as fundraisers, which I think is a, a really neat project as well. Um, whether they're trying to buy a, a chalkboard or something for their classroom. Again, so it's not that it's the, 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 the teachers enslaving the students and taking the money home to buy herself pizza. And I think that's, that's something really um, neat to see. Some of the courses that we offer at CFBC, environmental, environmental science and also environmental engineering. These are courses that, that make our students, our young people knowledgeable of the effect of plastics on our environment and how we can provide mitigation measures. We have to attract our young people, help them to think creative, creatively in terms of using plastic-free materials so the college can work in the sense that we're making awareness, awareness is very important, and getting our young people involved. So this year the environmental science students in Unit 1, or Year 1, um, they were doing research on um, sand dunes, and we looked at four different areas. The Keys Beach was one of the, um, the sites that were chosen in addition to North and South Friars Bay, and also as well as Frigate Bay. And so we realized that if we could use paper products or minimize waste, that would be the best way to go. So training them to be advocates for the environment is obviously the best thing that we could do. Another advantage to having our students, faculty engage in research here at the college is that it will disseminate to the wider community. They take it home to their families and we learn about um, the different policies that will assist us in environment, solving our environmental issues. At a higher level, we can lead the way by instituting policies to, to combat plastic pollution on campus. And perhaps this, this, this new um, strategy might influence the higher policy makers in government to come on board. You know, so CFBC can certainly lead the way in that regard. So the most important thing is for us to, to use plastic-free products, such as plant-based materials to make plates and, and cups and so forth. This is the number one means of eliminating plastic pollution uh, and having the consumer refuse to take plastics. That's very important as well. And so it is important for us to understand the impact of our actions. And so I am imploring 
the general population that if you can't reuse it, then refuse it. But I think the, the solution lies eventually with the children. I think they're the ones who, who are going to mold the, the protection of the environment moving forward. So I think we need to educate them and create some high levels of awareness in those schools now at this level. But the key is um, to act upon the knowledge that we do have now. And I think that's an ethical responsibility to act upon what we do know now. And there are many solutions uh, for the uptake. We don't have to wait necessarily on more research and all that stuff. And if we do not act now, we're actually discounting the future in economic terms. And that simply means that if we wait for the phenomenon to get more intensive and more impactful, it will cost us more in the future.